Hello everybody, and welcome to Arkham Horror the Card Game. Season 2, and we will be playing through all of the path to Carcosa. I've decided that Season 3 is just going to be following the cycle from now on. The first season was Night of the Zealot and Dunwich, because Night of the Zealot is so so uh, small, so short. So it was a bit of a longer first season, second season is going to be a bit shorter. But the episodes might be longer because we are running three investigators. And I've never run three investigators, so forgive me if the episodes are much longer. If they're too long, I'll cut them into two parts and upload them on the at the same time. Um, if anyone hasn't watched the epilogue, Calvin Wright was the last survivor of Season 1. We unfortunately lost Carolyn due to the doomed weakness. And I did see a couple comments saying, when you see Doomed, most people just take it out, but I thought it would be thematic at least the first time we see Doomed uh, throughout this series. <clears throat> so if it does come up again, I might <coughs> excuse me, I might opt to switch out for something else. But we have nothing like that for these three characters here. So Calvin, uh, if you don't know, starts with zero in all of his stats, and he gets bonuses for how much damage and horror is on him. So he's already halfway to being killed outright, and he's on his way to being insane. There's no way to heal mental trauma in this in this uh, cycle, I believe. So we're going to have to do our very best to keep Calvin as healthy as possible. We have Lola Hayes, and as you see with these two bowls here, Lola Hayes has to choose a role. She's the only neutral investigator who has threes across the board. And after we start our opening hand, we get to choose a role, and you can only play, commit, trigger abilities on neutral cards of that role. Now, this is very easy to mess up and forget. So I'm going to do my very hardest <laughs> to remember to do this correctly. Um, I lost some footage recording trying to record this, and uh, one of my major things was messing up with Lola. Uh, Mark Harrigan, he is going to be our fighter. He's got a decent willpower, so that's good. Uh, he's not going to be great with getting clues, but he's not bad for it. Two, two's okay. Like, he can get from a one shroud, for sure. Uh, he does have Sophie in play, who lets him take damage to get plus two for a skill test. And when he takes damage, once per phase, I can draw a card because of that. So he's pretty much, I think, exact same health sanity line as Roland was. So we're going to have to protect this boy's sanity as much as we can. Alright, we have everything set up, so let's move on to the campaign guide. So there's a new keyword that is hidden. So they have abilities that are secretly added to your hand, but since we're doing... It's just me playing. There's nothing really hidden here. I've already explained Lola and her roles, and Doubt and Conviction are part of the campaign log here at the very bottom left. So the last campaign log was... I think you had to record cultists that got away and cultists you killed. And that was pretty much all you had to take care of. So this one also has campaign notes, but you're also marking Chasing the Stranger... VIPs interviewed and VIPs slain, and then there's Doubt and Conviction as well. Alright. So Doubt and Conviction, what does it say here? Uh, it's based on your choices. I'm pretty sure, like, yeah. So, like, at the end, when you make a choice before the next scenario, you might add to your overall Doubt. Uh, Path to Carcosa adds story cards, which are really cool. So as you can see from that photo there, it's just a story. And then at the very bottom, it gives you some mechanical things to do in-game. All right. So we are... I should probably copy this. Play on standard. Perfect. Oh, I already have it set in there for everybody. Perfect. All right, we are playing on standard... And there's going to be a lot of reading, so I'm just going to go ahead and read. The Prologue. You turn over the folded program in your hand, reading it for what seems like the hundredth time. Miskatonic Playhouse presents The King in Yellow, it reads. A special one-night engagement at Arkham's very own Ward Theatre, an irresistible drama in two acts. 
production staged and directed by Nigel Engram. The cast is a small ensemble with one unattributed credit at the end, The Stranger. To have such a highly anticipated play come to Arkham all the way from Paris is a noteworthy event, even if it's just for one night. For weeks leading up to the show, it was the talk of the town. It seems so unassuming, and yet, you have evidence something sinister is at work. It started with the disappearance of one of the stagehands at the theater, a boy of only 17, who missed rehearsal one night and was never seen again. Then less than two weeks before the performance, there was a musician whose corpse was found with a gun in its mouth. Perhaps most chilling was the crazed man the coppers had picked up in Independence Square who had been ranting and raving about the King's return. He was brought to Arkham Asylum, and you were surprised to discover that he was not alone in his delusions. Finding these events suspicious, you and your companions have delved deeper into the matter. Although no connection can be proven, these weren't the only strange events surrounding the up-and-coming play. Instances of suicide and madness have followed in its wake, and you are determined to discover why. The lights in the auditorium dim, and the spotlight shines on the stage. What unfolds is not quite what you expected. A slow-paced and monotonous first act of The King in Yellow is a tedious bore. The setting and characters are compelling, but the meandering and nonsensical story does little to entertain or inform. You begin to wonder whether the dreadful events surrounding The King in Yellow aren't connected after all. Perhaps it was just your overactive imagination. How could such a trivial, unassuming show cause such pandemonium? You are surprised when the first act closes without any rising action or revelation. The lights rise for the intermission, and you consider leaving early, stifling a yawn. Before you are able to decide, however, you find yourself drifting, drifting to sleep. If Lola Hayes was chosen as investigator for this campaign, read Lola Prologue out loud. <clears throat> Lola Prologue. Act 1 came and went without a hitch, as it often did in rehearsal. Couldn't help but note the blank, dismissive expressions on many of the audience members' faces, and you wonder how the audience will react to the play's disturbing second half. The role of Casilda is tiresomely boring for the first half of the play, although you enjoy portraying her regal charm. You find yourself missing your previous co-star, Miriam Twain, and suddenly the dread and regret you had felt in Paris comes flooding back. With a sigh, you retreat to a dark corner backstage to escape the sounds of the stagehands preparing for this next scene. You try to quell your emotions and replace your thoughts with those of Casilda's. Her hopes, her fears, her fate. Just then, you catch the stranger staring at you from afar, and you find yourself shaking at the mere sight of him. Even though they continue to replace the actor who plays the stranger before each show, and indeed many times during rehearsals, you know that this last-minute replacement is the most horrid of them all. Realizing you never caught his name, a shiver of terror courses through your spine. Have you found your way back to the wolves like a lost lamb? You cannot look away. His gaze is inescapable. Everything goes black. Okay, Whew. that was a lot of reading. A little bit more. Scenario one, curtain call. You awaken with a start, as though shaken by an unseen force. You must have slept for quite some time, for there are only a few other patrons in the audience, and no other performers on stage. The lights are dimmed, and the stage curtains are tattered and ripped, though you do not remember that being the case during the first act. You wait a moment before you are sure this isn't part of the performance. As you wait, a foul but unrecognizable smell permeates the air. How long have you been asleep? Shaking off your drowsiness, you walk towards one of the seated patrons and ask for the time, but he does not respond. It is then that you realize you are speaking to a corpse. Wow. Okay. Gather all cards from the following encounter sets. Curtain call, evil portents. Yeah, it's all done for us. We already set aside those cards. Put the theater lobby. Yep. Each investigator begins at the theater, except for Lola, who starts backstage. Okay. And with that, we are in. Okay. Agenda 1A, the third act. The theater is eerily silent. The old wooden floor creaks beneath your feet, and a light rain gent gently patters on the roof as you explore the auditorium. There are more rotting corpses among the seats, and the rest of the crowd has vanished. Six Doom. Act 1A, Awakening. You pinch yourself to see if you're dreaming, and sure enough, your skin stings and reddens. You take a few deep breaths and try to think rationally. Whatever's going on, you must explore the theater to learn the truth of the matter. Alright, so six Doom, and we need nine clues. That's a lot. So we're going to really hope Calvin can help out. Now, 
I'm wondering if it's easier to just send everybody one way and then everybody the other way, or send these two one way and, and have Calvin Explorer on the left. I guess it's going to depend on our hands. So first off, let's read the theater. Must have been one hell of an intermission. To say that the theater is in disarray would be a profound understatement. The walls and seats previously polished to a shine are cracked and caked with dirt. The curtains are tattered and the set is stained with old blood. You aren't sure what's worse, the smell of rot or the nagging feeling that you've been asleep for a very long time. Right, in the backstage. The set is different from what you remember of the play's first act, decorated with a backdrop of an unsettling sunset. Alright. Forced when backstage is revealed, put two of the set-aside backstage doorway locations into play at random. While you're at backstage, each hidden treachery in your hand counts as three cards instead of one for the purpose of counting your hand size. Alright. Speaking of hand sizes... Mr. Calvin? Alright, that is a really good start. Well, actually, hold on, put that back. Um, yeah, I mean, I could put Rise of the Occasion back just to kind of hunt for a weapon. Might as well. Or that, that, that's great too. Okay, so Calvin has started with the Five of Pentacles, so you get plus one health, plus one sanity, and when the game begins, and this is in your opening hand, put into play, it's time to rise up again. So we're going to do that right away. We got Church Keepsake. Perfect. Zero cost, two sanity soak. Perfect. Look what I found. Fast play after you fail skill test by two or less while investigating. So the, the way I used to read this was two or more in my head, even though it, re it reads less. So it's like if you fail by two or more, but it's two or less. So we're going to have to be careful of that. Uh, until the end of time, it's an extra two health, two sanity. Perfect. And then track shoes. So I should be able to play a bunch of this on turn one, because Track Shoes gives us plus one agility, and after you move, but before enemies at your new location engage you, I could exhaust them to move again. So I think with Track Shoes, we will send Calvin with everybody to the right, because um, if he goes in, sees that there's nothing to get, comes out, that'd be perfect. So. <clears throat> okay. Is there any negative to testing? Uh, your location has at least one horror on it. Take one horror. But we don't start with any of those, so... The worst it would be is minus three if his horror goes up by one. Because in that case there's like basically five things to worry about, but getting to minus... Covering your minus three would pretty much cover you. Okay. Alright. Good start for Calvin. Miss Hayes. I see a lot of purple to start. When you, when you would succeed at a test, you get plus two. That's a good. That's maybe a good thing to start with, and then maybe switch to Mystic. Uh, I don't think we're gonna need Quantum Flux to start. We need to put that back too. Crystallizer of Dreams is interesting. At least if we start Rogue. That'd be fine. Okay. So after we <laughs> after we start our opening hand, we have to select a roll, and we will start with uh, rogue. Okay. Fancy skills here. You can go away. Alright. Take the initiative. What? What? What did I do? I apologize. Okay. Alt. That's what I was trying to press, not spacebar. Um. Don't think. Don't think we need take the initiative or shortcut right now. Uh, I'll hang on to Guts. We do have Machete, so... 
think I'll get rid of prepared for the worst. We're going to draw three more. Uh, daring. Commit only to a skill test during an attack or evasion against an enemy. Gain to retaliate after test and struck hard. Okay. Dodge and a gun. That's quite good. Alright, that's a good start for everybody, actually. I mean, decent start. Alright. So I don't think it truly matters who, who goes first. But let's start with Calvin. So, Mr. Calvin. Let's play those shoes. Alright. So, first action, shoes, second action, keepsake, uh, third action, till the end of time. Okay, Calvin's kind of set. Alright, Miss Lola. I need a guardian. Come on, tabletop. Alright. Alright. So we're going to play the Crystallizer of Dreams, and I'll read it out in a second. Alright, as an additional cost to put this card into play, you must search your opponent cards for one copy of Guardian of the Crystallizer and shuffle it into your deck. Uh, as a reaction, after you play an event, attach it face down to the Crystallizer of Dreams instead of discarding it. Oh my gosh, you know what I just realized? This is going to be really bad in Lola. I thought it was going to be so good. But to trigger this, she'll have to be rogue. Uh, it's not that it's going to be bad, but the way I have to do it is I have to start my turn as an event of a different color play the card, and then once it's played, use the free trigger to switch my roll to rogue, and then tap this to attach the event to that. That's insane. Doable, but insane. Alright. After you play in an event, attach a face down to crystallize the dreams instead of discarding it to a maximum of five attached events. Attached events may be committed to skill tests as if they were in your hand. So normally a good card, maybe not so good for her. Might be uh, trading that one out. Okay, now we do have a clue at our location. So it's a three, three shroud, one clue. So currently we would be good to get it. So that was our first action. But if we play Daring Maneuver, we'll be two up. So we're going to play the event, which I'll do that for now to say they're attached to Crystallizer. So when you would succeed at a skill test, you get plus two. McGlenny trying to get us both killed? Not this time, pal. Not this time. I hope McGlenn's going to be in the Innsmouth expansion. <clears throat> I really hope so. Okay, so our investigate. We are a five to a three. Um, do I want to give anything to that? No. Perfect. So we gain a clue. Actually, we're going to put everything here. Because they got these fancy new clue counters. Alright, and as our last action, I think, tabletop will stop lagging. I'm going to draw a card. That's a good card. Do I want to switch roles? Yes, I'm going to switch to Mystic. So just, I'm going to re go over my Lola turns to make sure I do them right. Crystallizer Dreams was already rogue. Played Daring Maneuver on Investigate, attached it, stayed rogue. Drew a card, switched to Mystic. Okay, cool. That's Lola finished. What was Guardian again? There we go. <clears throat> Alright, Mr. Mark. Definitely want to get a weapon out. Mm. 
we're going to put out the automatic for one. I'm going to gain a resource for two. And I think I'm going to move to Lola for three. That'll be the turn. Yeah. All right. Let's follow the rules. <laughs> Enemy phase, there's no enemies. Ready, all exhausted cards. Each investigator draws one card and gains one resource. Nice, right, it's occasion. Wait, did I shuffle his deck? I have two of those, okay. I'm not sure. Just thrown off now. Okay, gain your resource, draw a card. Did, did I? Okay, hold on. Those are both cards I shuffled. But no, I know I shuffled hers because I added the crystallizer. Okay. Just coincidence, I suppose. It threw me off. Vicious blow. Alright, let's put... Let's organize these hands a little bit. I want to make sure I get this all right. All right. So he is actually got that. These two can commit to each other. Got to remember that. Turn two, one doom. Shuffle the counter deck. Here we go. Search. If you have at least three Horan, you lose one action. Well, that was the closest person who would get it. Spirit's Torment. Attached to your location. After you leave the attached location, you must either take one horror or lose one action. Place one of your clues on the attached location to discard the Spirit's Torment. Dude, that sucks. Um... I don't remember that card. He can't even... He would have to lose an action to move. Oh, that sucks. I guess that's where the shoes will come in. Alright. A fanatic. Revealed location with the most clues. Well, there is not one. So, they're together. We'll give it to Mark. Mark. Rats. Okay, kind of bummed I might have to use my gun on that, but maybe we'll have uh, Calvin go first. So does Calvin want to take a horror? Yes, but not on him. All right, so our first turn, Calvin's going to move. He is a three fight. Uh, we're going to fight the rats. So we're a three to a one. Great. So Calvin kills the rats. I didn't want to engage. Did that on purpose. And I think we'll have Calvin move. So he moved. We have to put the horror somewhere. After tabletop decides to stop lagging. Okay, so that's the horror from... Spirit's Torment. We moved. So that was move. Then we fought. And then we're going to move again. Rehearsal Room. After you succeed by two or more while investigating the rehearsal room, you take a horror. As you enter this room, silently confronting you is a giant symbol torn into the wallpaper. You cannot tell whether the wall was deliberately vandalized or the material peeled away in the strange pattern on its own. Okay, everyone can get clues here, so we might as well mosey up. Uh, she has no way to fight right now. So let's move on to Mr. Mr. Mark. Mark just has to hit this thing once, so... 
take a bullet. So the way this reads, spend one ammo, fight, you get plus one for this attack, and it deals plus one damage. So we are six to a three. I'm not going to commit anything. Oh. How about that? Okay, six to a three. That's minus one. Yes. Okay, so he's dead. Um, and we're going to equip the machete. So, don't have to waste all that crap. Alright. Didn't take any damage. Okay. Lola. Lola, Lola, Lola. Lola's going to move for one. She investigated a three to one. That's not too bad. But we're going to equip... Oh, yeah. We're going to equip the rosary. Oh, wait. No, we're not. Oh, my. Already running into problems. Uh, let's do read the signs. Or should we have save that for a harder one? Because I literally just want to play this to get the clues faster, but it's not smart. Let's just investigate normally. So, three to a one. Fail. Okay. <laughs> three to one. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what are the chances? What? <laughs> okay. Well, that's that. No enemies. Upkeep phase. Draw a card. That's a good one. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Gain a resource. I might play read the signs depending on how the next turn goes. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Interrogate. Oh, I wish I had that last turn. It's too late now. Oh, do I want to change before? I think we're staying Mystic. Wait, what was my first turn? I was going to play the Rosary, but didn't. Uh, I think I wasted it. So I think I have one Investigate. Right? It would have been Rosary, Investigate, Investigate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I still have one. Because I didn't move. Or did I? Shoot, I can't remember. No, I was already here. So I have an Investigate. Three to one. Cool. So I get a clue. It's a little better. All right. Here it goes. Oh, Spires. He's getting all the bad ones. Spires of Carcosa. All right. Attach your location and place two doom on that location. If there is no doom, you discard the spires. Investigate if you succeed. Instead of discovering clue here, remove one doom from the attached location. But that sucks. But it's at least on a location with really low shroud. And with two guys there, with potentially Mark as well joining, should be alright. Black stars rise. Test four willpower. If you fail, you must either place one doom on the current agenda or take one horror for each point you fail by. This effect can take can cause the current agenda to advance. Well, this is terrible. But I could use deny existence. Uh, okay, you know what? It's fine. Because of deny existence. Alright. So we're testing four um four intellect. Zero. So I actually don't mind taking one horror. Yeah, that's fine. Alright. 
For each cultist enemy, I play move one clue from the enemy's location to the enemy. Until the end of the round, each cultist enemy gets plus one fight for each clue and or doom on it. If no clues, remove fights against search. Oh, I, he gets this every time. It's always Mark. It's terrible on anyone, but Mark gets it the most every time I play. Put Frozen and Fear into play in your threat area. The first time you move, or sorry, perform one of the following actions, move, fight, or evade each round. It costs one additional action. At the end of your turn, test three will. If you succeed, discard Frozen and Fear. <laughs> well, we might as well Mark go first. Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, we're going to move Mark up. Because worst case scenario, they can help buff him, and he's going to investigate. So he is a two to uh, uh, No, that won't work. Should we use Sophie just to guarantee this? It's not really worth it, is it? No, we'll just do it. Two to a one. Perfect. I'm glad we didn't waste anything on that. And that's our first auto fail. And it wasn't that bad. All right, we'll go to Calvin next. So Calvin is also a two to one, but we do have to look what I found. So let's do an investigate. All right, so that's a tie. So we're gonna take one doom off here. Investigate again. That is also a tie. Goodbye, Spires. That's two turns we did not need. And we'll just do a regular investigate. Look at that. Maybe having Mark up here was kind of pointless. But you never know how things are going to turn out. All right, uh, Lola, she will try. Three to a one. Three to one. Thank you. All right. Good news. We have our first victory point location. Excellent. Um, I think it would be silly for Lola to move on her own. But efficient-wise, efficiently... Let's have her move. For efficiency. I think that's what I was trying to say. She's going to stay mystic. Um, so we have that deny existence ready. Okay, that was a fast turn. Alright, everybody draws a card, gains resource. Okay. And... B-Cop. Something to spend his money on. Perfect. Something to throw damage to. Need more of those. Okay. Right. Angles. Okay. Mythos face. Starting here. Twist it to his will. If there's no doom in play, Twisted Hills gain search. Otherwise, test willpower X, the amount of doom in play, which is three. Willpower three. If you fail, discard two cards from your hand at random. Well, let's play Rise to the Occasion. So, is the difficulty of the test too higher than your base skill? My base is zero, so this gives me plus three. So I'm a five to a three. No, I'm a, s yeah, five to a three. Well, this is bad. That's not what I wanted. Oh. Well, that's pretty bad. Surge, if you have at least three horror. Okay, well, luckily that thing is missed twice. There's no cultist, so that surges as well. Another spirit's torment. Great. Uh, 
great. I guess we'll have to deal with that. Yeah. Damn. Okay. And swarm of rats. Oh, right. He was going to do his frozen in fear. So we'll commit guts. So that would be a 5 to a 3. Perfect. That's gone. Okay. That's everybody. Now, who wants to go first? Spirits torment. Spirits torment. Um, could get rid of it real quick with working hunch. Yeah, I think we will. Is it an action to drop a clue? Of course it is. All right. First thing, drop a clue. That gets rid of it. But now there's a clue at the location. Okay. I'll just spend working a hunch, which is fast, to get the clue back. Alright, so one waste a turn. Not terrible. Um, we'll have her move. Get rid of the other spirit's torments. Okay, not terrible. Now we'll go to Mark. Mark will hack at the rats with the machete. Six to one. Mark. <laughs> oh, well. He's going to move. He can't stay up here. Okay, that's... no. <laughs> what a turn. All right, Calvin. Calvin's going to move for one. We're about to see if we need our shoes here. Oh, I didn't read the backstage stories, did I? A simple wooden door leads into the back of the theater, far from prying eyes of patrons, and they all say the same. Oh, heal three horror. The cast's dressing room is filled with all manners of costumes and accessories, but it's the tattered yellow robe at the far end of the room that catches your attention. It looks too torn and disheveled to be worn, yet it's enticing all the same. All right, so there's nothing here. We're going to activate our track shoes here. So we're going to test three. I have a four. Well. Um. I'm going to take a damage to buff my stats in the fighting area. Yeah. And the cool thing is we activate it so we get to come back in the same turn, and I'm going to draw a card with my last go. Perfect. Alright, so for him it was move, move, track shoes. And then we drew a card. Okay. Moving along slowly. Let's take inventory. We have three clues. It's not great. We're moving a lot slower than maybe we should have split up. Because we're going to have to come back here at a certain point. Yeah. But Calvin's not the best one to go alone. And Lola's not really set up. I guess she kind of is. Gain a resource, draw a card. Uh oh. Deal two damage to investigator at your location. I guess it'll be. Mark can take it. Right? Oh, come on, tabletop. Whoa. There was a sound effect. I didn't touch anything. Yeah, we'll give it to Mark. She'll draw a card for. Oh, that sucks. When the game ends... Oh, it's when you play it that happens. Oh. My bad. Just forget that. You have to play this card for two. Okay, gotcha. 
When the game ends and you're eliminated, if it's still in your hand, remove it from your deck. Add the price of failure. Gotcha. I haven't played with this one, I don't think. Or, like, personally. I've seen my uh, other players use it. Mr. Rook. That's actually really good. Okay. And Mark. We already know he's going to draw. Okay. Oh, before I jump the gun. Spires of Carcosa. Why? You know what? It's fine. We're going to leave it up. Screw you, Spires of Carcosa. Tabletop is loving to lag today. Oh, whispers in your head. Secretly add this to your hand. You cannot move more than once each turn. Discard whispers in your head. You know what? That's fine for now. Okay, Mr. Mark. Ah, of course. The Poltergeist. Cannot be damaged except by spell, relic, or encounter cards. Parlay test three. Uh, intellect to attempt to banish the geist. If you success, if you succeed, deal one damage to it. Well, I don't think anyone has a relic or spell. Oh, man. This is not good. Not good for it. Like, nobody can deal with this. Well, I mean, we can deal it one damage. Yeah. Ugh. I know Lola has spells, but to get them out, I don't know. All right, well, what's the window here? You draw your card in the upkeep phase, right? Okay, so when I saw Mr. Rook, I would have switched to to Seeker. Okay. Cool. So let's start with Lola. Lola is going to play Mr. Rook for three. He gets three secrets, but we're going to spend one right away. Exhaust Mr. Rook. Search the top three, six, or nine cards of your deck for any card. Draw it. If at least one weakness is among the search cards, draw one of them as well. Shuffle your deck. So we're going to search six. Okay, good news, no weaknesses. And I see a spell. We are going to take the spell. Alright. That was the first action. Free trigger. Switch to Mystic. Yeah. Play Shriveling. Um, I'd have to move over there. I'll have Mark maybe move over. What does the poltergeist do? Two. Mm. Uh, could dodge. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll do that. He'll make his way over. Yeah. All right. So Lola's gonna investigate the location. Uh, tabletop. Hello? Okay. So she's a three to a two. Cool, she gets it. Alright. Calvin. 
play the meat cleaver. Uh, I think... We'll save this Dark Pact. <laughs> um, Calvin's gonna move for one. I think I'm just gonna draw a card. Okay, not bad. Somewhere I can toss more willpower. See, the thing is... Uh, the minus three when you have three horror on you is just so bad. If I could guarantee, like two coming on me, then maybe, but I don't know. We'll see. Mark is going to move for one. Spend one resource to play dodge. Dodging the poltergeist attack, but bringing the poltergeist with him. Uh, There's not really much else he can do. I mean, he can attempt to. He can attempt to parlay with it twice. All right. Three. Nope. Nope. <laughs> what a waste. All right. All right. End of turn here. Ready all exhausted cards. Draw a card, gain a resource. That's a good one. That's a good one, too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. She's not in that location. No. Okay. So this is our special card. Fast play only during your turn. Switch your roll until the end of uh, your turn. Reduce the resource of cost of the next card you play during of your roll by three. Draw one card. Very good. Now... Doing it at the proper timing, do I want to change from Mystic? I think we're going to stay Mystic, just to cover what's going to happen. Okay. Haunted. You get minus one to each of your skills. This is not good. Oh, Mark. It's not your game. It's not your game. All right. All right. The doom is going to go roll over. All right. The emissary's message. Abruptly, the malformed body of an unnatural nightmare slams onto the stage. Its slithering tendrils reach into the aisles. It opens its maw and lets out a shrill, piercing song. The melody is uncanny. The notes sear into your mind. Pain pounds in your forehead. A blood blood runs from your ears. Search the side side cards. Victories play for the royal emissary and spawn in the theater. All right, everybody's there. It's probably gonna land on Mark. Oh, it preys on the lowest willpower. That's Calvin. He is massive, he is hunter, and he retaliates. So that's not good. At the end of the enemy phase, each investigate at the Royal Embassy's location, or connecting location, takes one horror. Okay, well, he's not impossible to beat. Great. Agenda 2A, Encore. The creature's song echoes relentlessly through the halls of the theater. The melody repeats again and again, yet somehow never the same note twice. After the Royal Emissary is added to the victory display, remove all Doom from play and reset the agenda deck to 1A and place 3 Doom on that agenda. So not impossible. How are we on clues? We're not even halfway there. Okay, well, now to draw our encounters. Frozen in fear. Welcome back. As the game likes to freeze. Lola? Whispers in your head. You cannot play events. She's getting all the bad stuff. <laughs> oh. What is this turn? 
What is this turn? I don't even know. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Well. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I'll tell you that. All right, we're going to use Shriveling. So we are a three to a three, but we're going to tap Mr. Rook. Oh, we can't. It's not how Lola works. Good Lord. Okay, we're going to swap to Rogue. Commit during maneuver from the Crystallizer. So we're 4 to a 3. Oh my god, that kills. Yes. We got rid of one of them. Alright. We're going to play improv improvis Improvisation. Switch your role. Until the end of your turn, reduce the resource cost of the next card you play of your role by three and draw a card. Oh. Alright, well, anyway. I'm going to play for my second action, Holy Rosary. And third action, I'm going to shrivel again. So now I'm a four to a three. And I'm going to commit Quantum Flux, so I'm a 5 to a 3. Perfect. Oh my god, Lola. Alright, let's make sure I did that right. I used Shriveling, switched to Rogue, committed to a 4 to a 3, got a minus 1, kills. That was all one action. Then I played improvis Improvisation. Which doesn't cost one to switch back to Mystic to play Holy Rosary. That was my second action. Third action, use the other shriveling charge. Okay, that seems correct. Which freed up Mark, so we'll switch to Mark. Who is of course at minus one to all of his skills right now. But against the Royal Emissary that might be fine. Yeah, it's fine. So we're going to hack at him. We're going to play Daring. So we are a 5 minus 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. We're 7 to a 4. Where is he? We're 7 to a 4. I'll throw in a tear. No. I'll throw in a machete. I just want to be sure. Oh. Well. Okay, that went well. Do I think Calvin can do this? Let's not take the gamble. So I'm a, f with that bonus, I'm a 5 to a 4. 5 to a 4. Let's just let go. Ooh. Oh, wait. If I remembered to had retaliate, mm, I probably wouldn't have done that. Alright, well. So Calvin takes two damage. Uh, which we have to put on here. And this retaliates against him, right? Against Mark? Or two? Draws card. Well, we're not going to be handcuffing anything. 
All right, so we're going to attack one more time. So we're five to four. This time we're going to toss in one. No. Oof. Well, this kills Calvin if I miss. What do you just mean? Seven to a four. Okay, he's dead. So for now, he goes in here, but he'll be back. Rewind. So we have three turns before he comes out again. So we have three turns to kind of juice everybody back up. But Calvin, Calvin is free to do things. So he's going to move to the lobby. When the lobby is revealed, put two of the set side lobby door locations to play. You can draw three cards here. Two actions. I'll take that. Oh my god, we need we need all of these things. That was a good get. One, two, three, four, six. Okay. And then is everybody gone? That was probably the most successful turn. Probably a waste of like resources, but Yeah, we almost killed Calvin. <laughs> there there was a world where um if that last attack missed. Okay. I still can't even imagine that went through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Draw a game resource. That does not work. And I don't. I don't get to redraw a card. Okay. And gain a resource. Draw a card. On the hunt. Okay, well, there's 13 cards left. So, Calvin. Oh, wait, hold on. Calvin has to test Frozen of Fear. Uh, for a 2 to a 3. Okay, let's just do it. Uh, yeah, we'll put a rise occasion. So, we're at 5 to a 3. Minus one, you're gone. Now, <laughs> rotting remains. Test the exact same thing. Uh, do we bite the bullet and take the horde now? Yeah. All right. So we take three horror. So, whoops, one, two. All right, playing with fire now. Okay, that's rotting remains done. Oh my god! You cannot trigger. I have to. Oh well, I have to do that. This turn is this. Oh, how lame! I might play Clarity of Mind as well. Wow. Twist it to his will. If there's no doom in play, well, there is. So I have to test three. If you fail, discard two cards at random. That's willpower, right? Yes. Well, there's nothing I can do here. Unless Lola wants to commit a purple card to this. I feel like she doesn't. Discard two cards, right? What? Is this location to everybody? It is. Okay. We will... I'm assuming we're going to fail. All right, we're three to a three. That's a minus one. So... Oops. I just broke the system by pressing F one too many times. Okay. 
First card lost. B cop. Followed by handcuffs. And I keep on the hunt. Amazing. Alright. Well. These two seem alright. <laughs> We're going to start with Lola. She has to play Whispers in your head. So she's using two actions to get rid of that. And I believe it's a decent time to play Clarity of Mind. That is Lola's turn, sadly. Um, Calvin... Calvin needs to get out Pete. So putting out Peter Sylvester. So we get plus one willpower and plus one agility. All of a sudden, somebody is very powerful. And we're just going to buff up. We're going to put on the coat. We're going to put in the keepsake. We're almost there. Okay. Yeah, that's all I can do. Mark is going to hope Lola's fine just staying there. And he's going to draw three cards. So we drew something worth fighting for. Take the initiative. And scene of the crime. Decent. That was a very fast turn for everybody. So we're going to draw a card. Nice. Gain resource. Draw a card. Ooh. Gain resource. Can't play that yet. Does she want to change roles? Yes. We're going to change to yellow. And at the same time, we're going to use Mr. Rook. We're going to search six cards again. No weakness. Great. Uh, what do we want? What do we want? Hawkeye folding camera would be decent. Drawn to the flame would be decent, too. She's not rolling in money anymore, so intel report's not great. I think we might take Drawn to the flame. Gonna make things a bit quicker, which means we have to get rid of Whispers in your head next. Draw a card. Bandolier, cool. Gain a resource. Alright. Doom. Turn. Oh, why did I do that? Did I do that? Rotting remains. Well, we now are at 5 to a 3. Uh, yeah, I think we'll let it go. So that is a minus three, right? Yes. So I can put one horror on me. I'm going to put it on me, and I'm going to risk it. Lola. Cannot play assets or events. That kind of works out. I mean, it kind of sucks because I was going to play a Dream Diary, but whatever. Okay. That's you done. Now. We're not going to play on the hunt. We're just going to let it come. It doesn't matter. Fanatic. Real location with most clues. That's where we are. Move one clue to the, to the fanatic, and we defeat him, we get the clue. That is actually great, because that's a high shroud location. Perfect. Perfect. Well, with that, I think it's a good time for... Let's start with Lola. Lola is going to use her first two actions to get rid of whispers in your head, so she can play events in the future, and she's going to move for one. Yes. Because she can only move once each turn. Okay, great. And we emptied one card out of our hand. That's supposed to be back up. 
Do we want to use Mr. Rook again? No, we don't. Oh my god. We can't play assets or events, but we can use assets, right? Who's at my location? Alright, let's swap to Miss... No, you know what? Just in case we draw a weakness, let's stay. Let's stay as... Because we just lose Mr. Rook. Alright, so that's her done. Let's move on to... Let's move on to... Mark. Oh my god, what? Um... Okay, let's take this guy out. So... Machete would be a 5 to a 3. I think we'll leave it like that. Cool. Mark gets a clue. Kills you. Uh, I think... We're going to play something worth fighting for. And we're going to move. Mark is going to move up here. An ornate wooden door leads to the front areas of the theater. Lighting box. While you're in the lighting box, increase the resource cost of each card in your hand by two. At the top of the narrow claustrophobic staircase, you find the lighting crew's closet-like booth stationed above the balcony. Expensive lighting equipment and several heavy spotlights dominate the cramped room. Okay. Alright. Now, does Calvin go up there, or does Calvin go up here? here? Don't know. I think... D uh, he is five to investigate now. Alright, Calvin's gonna move up. For one. We're gonna investigate. So that's one clue. And we're going to investigate one more time. Okay, what are we at? Seven clues. Okay. Not bad. Alright. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Draw a card, gain a resource. Do I want to switch roles? No, we're going to stay. And this goes away. Uh, mark, 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 mark. We don't need to pull someone now, because I can just play scene of the crime. If, if he had failed one of those, but he has so many catch-up mechanics now. I think it's fine. So we're just going to let go. He got a minion anyway. Praise on the most clues. So that would actually go to Calvin. After that, he attacks you, move one of your clues to the agent. When you defeat him, take control of your clues. Not too bad. Calvin's not doing too shabby for himself either. Alright. Uh, does he have retaliate? No, he's just a hunter. Okay. Wasn't too bad, wasn't too bad. Um. Let's play the Dream Diary. So. There we go. Ooh. Play the Dream Diary for one. We're going to use its ability to add uh, Essence of the Dream to your hand. And we're going to move for one. Oh, you can gain five resources. Remember that you stole from the box office. Raindrops pelt your clothing as you step into the box office. It takes you a moment before you remember you purchase your tickets indoors and you realize it is somehow raining through the roof of the hall. We have to go to the balcony. We're going to have to fight the thing again. <sighs> Alright, so... We... 
Dream diaried. Use the dream diary. Moved. That was her whole turn. Do we just want to pick this up testlessly? Uh, no, because Mark could go one, two, and then pull. But he could investigate one, two. No, Mark should go here. So he could grab the clue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Mark grabs the clue for two. Move, move. Oh, but Mark should get rid of this. Haunted, and then move. Let Calvin pick that up. Okay. Yeah, so... Mark is going to use two actions to discard Haunted. And he's going to move. Quick turn. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot Agent of the King was on Calvin. Um, okay, well, let's discard that anyways. And hack at Agent of the King. Because that'd be a 7 to... He's got 4 health, eh? Yeah. So it would be a 7... Seven to three. No, six to three. Six to four. What am I talking about? Six to four. Cool. And then Calvin. So he's at a 6 to a 4. And I don't need to trigger the additional cost. Oh no, yes I do. Okay, so we'll put one horror on Peter. So we are a 6 to a... 6 to a 4. Whoa! Let's go crazy. Okay, so he's gone. In you go. That was one action. Second action, investigate. Oh, what a beast. How many have we got? We've got eight. He's gonna move. And we're gonna exhaust the track shoes. Seven, two, a three. Right? Up we go. Well, actually, a carpeted staircase leads up to the balcony. Somehow a hot draft is blowing down through a steep passageway. After you perform a move action during which you move from the balcony to the theater, take two damage. To your disappointment, the balcony sections are much like the ground floor below, although every now and then you think you spot a figure moving silently in the aisles. Alright. Okay. Well, we're almost, <laughs> we're almost there. We're getting there. All right. Starting with Mr. Calvin. Draw a card. Good. Gain a resource. Draw a card. Gain a resource. We're going to steal that money. But we have too many cards in hand, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, you know what? I don't think we need Draw to the Flame. Do I want to change this? No, because I can uh, put Essence of the Dream into a test. Excellent. Okay. Gain a resource draw card. Ooh, Tetsuo Mori. Gotta get you in, buddy. Uh, I had to discard the beat cop, didn't I? Yeah. Alright. And that is just the first part. Ready, I'll exhaust cards. Doom. Here we go. Of course. But you're kind of set up. What were you going to play? Drawing thin. Oh, wait, or events, right? God damn it. That's everything. I can play resourceful. There you go. Right. Rats. Even she can deal with that. It's fine. 
Oh, you cannot commit skills skill cards to skill tests. I don't have any skill. I do have one skill card. And we're frozen. Man, tabletop today. All right. Everyone's at home. Okay. That wasn't so bad, actually. All right. Should we start with Lola? You fudge me, man. Lola, get rid of this card. And move. No. We're going to steal money. We're going to steal money. There we go. Yep. That was her turn. She had three of those. That's insane. That's six actions. Okay, he can't play assets or events, but we can investigate. Okay, hold on. We are at five to... Yeah, so that ties. Let's unclue. Let's investigate again. There's another clue. And again. What a turn. Look at Mr. Kluver. Oh yeah, this is gone. Cool. So yeah, you had a quick turn, you had a quick turn. Move, move. Oh wait. We're going to get rid of this. Just screw these things. Actually, hold on. Okay. Being a little meta here, right? Keep this in my hand. There's only three cards left in the encounter deck. So when it reshuffles, this will go into the discard pile, which we won't see this for a long time. Probably should have hung on to that with her as well, but... Alright, so we're going to move... We're going to move. I can't commit skill cards. But I could play Tetsu, who can take a lot of hits. So he can be assigned damage or horror dealt to other investigators. And when he's defeated, I can search the top nine cards of my deck for an item asset. Shuffle it into my hand. So, pretty good. So move, move, boom. Okay, that's everything. Draw a card, get a resource, get rid of distant voices. Oh, did we have a swarm of rats that whole turn? Okay, <laughs> hold on. Shrivelings, 4 to 1. Okay. Dead. Did not gain the resources. That was her turn. Okay. Uh, that sucks. <laughs> Good thing I caught it, though. Okay, we've seen this before. Royal Emissary comes out, goes straight on to Mark. He's the only one there. Alright. Counters. Rotting remains. I'm a six, so I'm gonna let go. Rock that. Fanatic. A location with the most clues. They're all tied for having the most clues, so... Give it to you. our good friend Calvin. And Black Stars Rise has four intellect. If you fail, you must either place one doom on the current agenda or take one horror for each point you fail by. That's fine. Uh, do I want to commit any books? Yeah. Uh, so this says I can't commit skill cards. 
that's not a skill card. That's an event. All right, so I am tied. I'm four for four. I just don't see myself playing that. I could save it for a fight, though. Yeah, all right, fine. Wait, but if I lose, don't I discard two cards? Oh, no, this is the horror. Okay. All right, so... I take three horror. Uh, I'll put... two on something worth fighting for. One on Tetsuo. Because I'm hoping Tetsuo can take a hit from the Royal Emissary, worst case scenario. Alright. I do want to start with Mark, because he's dealing with the Royal Emissary. So, Mark is going to swing for a 6 to a 4. We're going to commit on the hunt, so he's a 7 to a 4. Good thing we did that. Next, yeah, whatever. Tossing in this to be a 7 to a 4. Bye bye, Royal Emissary. Reset. We still have an action. Uh, he's going to move this way. Because we know where the uh, the man in the pallet mask is gonna appear. All right, start with Lola. Lola is going to move, move, move. No, move. No, take money. Move, move. too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's going to be, it's going to have to be it. Uh, we're going to use this to go to that. Uh, you know what? We'll play shortcut because we have to, we're going to have to discard a card anyway. So move over. Okay. And Calvin. Calvin could jump down, but what's the point? Calvin, Calvin, Calvin. We need to play his Dark Pact. Somebody, probably Lola. One, two. No, it's just one. Two. Oh, wait. He's got a minion on him. Fanatic. All right. Never mind. We're fight. Uh, I will take the sanity damage put on Peter. So we are swinging in four, a seven to a three. That is a minus three. That kills him. Then we move. Actually, no. He moves once. We'll play drunk then. Yeah. Okay. Not bad. Oh, wait. Don't jump the gun. Any enemies? No. Alright. Drop card. Gain resource. Drop card. <laughs> Gain resource. card. Can't play it. Can't resource. Did I get Lola's? I never get Lola's. Alright. Up we go. Okay. Let's just grab this balcony. Alright. Doing alright. Doing alright. So. 
was like, what the hell is that sound? Well, we got dissonant voices back. Cannot play assets or events. I guess that's fine. Oh yeah, this gets uh, after your turn ends, so that's gone. Level up. Okay, here we go. Test for intellect if you fail. Now, I'm going to put Essence of the Dream into here. Oh my god, tabletop. Thank you. Right, so that's plus two. So that's putting me at five. Succeed by three or more to record the interpreted dreams. I'm going to put in both three of the signs. So I'm a seven to a three. Nine to a three. Okay, cool. Um, so we have interpreted the dreams. Excellent. Did not think I'd get that done in the first one, but we did.